Greetings fellow enthusiasts and welcome to Quantum, How Everything is Made, a channel that takes you on an extraordinary journey through the fascinating processes that bring our everyday wonders to life. Today's episode is an exploration into the very essence of modern convenience. Yes, buckle up because we're about to unravel the intricacies of how plastic, an integral part of our daily lives, is made. It's estimated that its global production has increased by around 100% every decade. Each and every year, more than 380 million tons of plastic are manufactured. Therefore, it should not come as a surprise that the plastic sector is worth more than $600 million. The question is, how is it manufactured? Are you ready for the revelation? Drilling is a technique that is used to obtain crude oil, which is the major raw material used in the production of plastic. It's accomplished by drilling a well bore into the crust of the earth in order to access oil resources that are located deeply beneath. As a standard practice, the drilling procedure involves the utilization of a drilling rig, which is outfitted with specific apparatus in order to penetrate the ground. When the well bore reaches the reservoir, the pressure that's present within the reservoir causes the crude oil to flow upwards and into the well bore in the process. This initial flow is frequently supported by the natural reservoir pressure, but as the pressure lowers over time, additional approaches such as pumping or injecting gases and fluids may be utilized in order to improve oil recovery. After it's been extracted, crude oil is refined by being heated in a furnace to approximately 700 degrees Fahrenheit or 52 degrees Celsius or 400 degrees Celsius. A transfer of the oil vapors takes place in a fractionating column a tall tower with a series of compartments. At the bottom of the tower, a chamber's temperatures are higher, while at the top, they are lower. As the many components that comprise petroleum travel through the chambers in the form of gases, they continue to rise until they reach a temperature at which they transform into liquids. Because the boiling point of each item is different, it's possible to separate and collect the liquefied substance once it has liquefied in a distinct chamber as gases, ethane, and propane, which are the fundamental components of plastic and have low boiling temperatures are collected from the highest point of the container tower. Cracking is the procedure that's carried out on the ethane and propane fractions that have been extracted from the crude oil components. But here's when it gets even more intriguing. Through the process of cracking, the bigger hydrocarbon molecules that are present in these fractions are broken down into smaller molecules that are more useful, such as ethylene and propylene. The manufacturing of plastic requires the use of monomers, which are molecules of a smaller size. After that, the monomers of ethylene and propylene that have been cracked are gathered together and used to prepare for the polymerization process. Addition polymerization and condensation polymerization are the two primary processes that are utilized in the process of polymerization, which is the fundamental step in the production of plastics. A process known as addition polymerization is carried out on monomers such as ethylene and propylene. During this process, catalysts and initiators break the double bonds that are present in the monomers, thereby creating polymer chains. It's through the use of this process that polyethylene, polypropylene, and polyvinyl chloride or PVC are manufactured. Now hold your excitement because the journey doesn't end there. The condensation polymerization process is responsible for the formation of certain types of plastics. This process involves the reaction of two distinct monomers, which results in the release of a byproduct such as water. One example of a plastic that's created in this manner is nylon, which is similar to polyester. Once a polymerization process is complete, the plastic that's produced can be transformed into standardized plastic pellets, which are also referred to as nurdles. For the purpose of preserving the quality of the pellets, this method comprises first extruding the plastic into strands, then cutting those strands into pellets, and finally, cooling and drying them afterwards. After being packaged, the nurdles are then sent to plastic producers, who use them as raw materials for a variety of plastic production processes. Injection molding, extrusion molding, and blow molding are some of the techniques that are utilized in the process of shaping the plastic pellets into a variety of sizes and shapes after they've been received. The dimensions, contours, and characteristics of the final result are all determined by these procedures. After the plastic has been shaped, it's cooled and solidified so that it can maintain the form and properties that were intended for it. It's possible to improve the qualities of plastic by introducing additives either during or after the polymerization process. These additions give the product additional desirable properties like color, resistance to ultraviolet light, flame, retardancy, and flexibility. Not only can nurdles be utilized in the creation of primary plastic, but they can also be utilized in the recycling process. 
Through the process of pelletization, recovered plastic materials can be transformed into recycled plastic pellets. These pellets are then utilized in the production of new plastic products that contain recycled components. At every level of the plastic production process, from the production sites to the transportation stages, and even during the manufacturing stages, there is the potential for the substance to leak. Limitations in awareness, reckless handling, insecure storage, and inadequate equipment are the causes of factory spills, as well as spills that occur while the product is in transit. In the event of a nursery spill into the ground, it's possible for the wind and rain to sweep the contents down storm drains or into waterways, leaving them to eventually make their way into the ocean. A variety of quality control techniques ought to be put in place in order to forestall the occurrence of nurse spills and facilitate the production of plastic in a responsible manner. This includes the establishment of good manufacturing practices, or GMP, that are specifically tailored to the production of plastic pellets, the utilization of appropriate guidelines for handling and storage, the guarantee of robust pellet packaging, the performance of routine quality assurance checks, and the provision of comprehensive employee training on the prevention and response to spills. Thinking about the application, below is the process that's used to make plastic Coca-Cola bottles. And that concludes another mesmerizing episode of Quantum, How Everything is Made. We hope you enjoyed this insightful expedition to the realm of plastic production. If you found today's exploration as mind-blowing as we did, make sure to hit that like button, share the knowledge, and subscribe to stay tuned for more revelations.